Wow, here we are, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. The, a good place to start. When you're leaving the house, where do you leave? In the beginning, you leave the house, don't you? And when you come home, you come back to the house. Wow. And that's what, where you start and finish. If we're going to start with the Bible, we need to start in the front. Do you know I know many Christians, including myself for a lot of years, hadn't really ever studied Genesis chapter 1. Well, Genesis chapter 1 said in the beginning. And that's where we're going to start right now. We're going to breeze on through and get all the way up to a man called Abraham today. And the thing was, in the beginning, God created. That was what was important. He, what did he create? Created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. So God decorated the earth. And then the first day, he made a difference with the light. He put lights on the earth, a sun and a moon. Light for the day and a moon for the night. The second day, he gave vapor. What was vapor for? It didn't rain, you know, all the way up to Noah's day. There was a vapor, a mist that was over the earth, that watered the earth. The third day, he made the land and the uh, plant life appeared. He had made the, day, the, the vapor before, so plant life could appear. And then he made that. And on the fourth day, sun, the moon, and the stars. He put that sun up there to control the temperature and the daytime uh, for a period of hours and the moon to, to con uh, for the next period of hours. And as the earth turns, we use half of the earth, our half, for our daylight. And while it's our daylight, it's nighttime on the other half. God knew what he was doing. He rotated the earth so the heat and cool, the day and the night, would... Uh, not would not conf conflict with each other. Now, if you did not have, if you had all daytime on the earth, you would more than likely have vegetation would take over the whole earth. And so uh, that's what he didn't want to happen. So he made day and night. In other words, he knew another thing too, that everything that he was going to create, including man, had to have rest time. Everything has to have rest time. On the fifth day, he made animal life. On the sixth day, he made other living creatures that he brought forth. The worms and the, all other kinds of things that he brought forth. And uh, the first dispensation was called innocence. And uh, the sixth day is when he brought man onto the earth. And the sixth day, he brought living creatures and brought. And the sixth day, he also brought man and gave him dominion. Gave him dominion over the earth. Now you see that he created man. He also brought woman on the earth. But when he brought woman, it was later on. And he took her from man. Made her out of a man's rib. That's what she was created from. From a man. So she would want to join back to that man. God knew what he was doing. He made it so that men and women were to be mates. They were to marry and be mates all forever. One woman for one man. One man for one woman. And that was it. If he had wanted more, he would have took two ribs out. And then there would have really been a battle, wouldn't there? So God's seventh day rest. On the seventh day, he rested. He expects you and I to rest on the seventh day and to worship. That's what he expects us to do. And we need to do that. And then uh, all the further details about the creation of man and other things is later on in the chapters. And we're not going to go to those. We're going to skip now all the way up into uh, a, a man called Abraham, a special chosen man. God was going to make a nation. A lot happened between the creation and Abraham. But until we get to Abraham, God allowed this world to kind of go the way it was going. And then he said, I'm going to choose a man 
a faithful man, and he's going to be a father to a great nation. And that nation is going to be a people that worship me as God, the Creator, God. A people that are going to worship me as Creator. And so, let's look at his first... Uh, uh, the first parents, the first name, uh, he named at birth in the city of Ur. Uh, God renamed him at age 99 in the land of Canaan from Abram, A-B-R-A-M. That was, that name meant a few. That name meant a few. And then he named him Abraham. That means he would be a many. Abraham meant many. So he would be many. He would be a founder of a nation. No longer would uh, she be known as Sarai. That was his wife. Her, her heathen name was Sarai. And God gave her a new name. Her Christian name was Sarah. S-A-R-A-H. So uh, this was something God did. By changing the two names, he said, now you are special people for me. And you are going to start a, what you and I would say today, we use the word Christian. But he said, you are going to start a spiritual uh, group among the people. People who worship me. And the divine timing was perfect. For in less than a year, the founder of the nations and the barren princess would conceive and bear the first child, and his name was Isaac. Now Isaac was the gift from God, the first child born uh, in, in the spiritual world now, in the spiritual world. Wonder of wonders, God promised had come true. There awaited, however, one final test for Abraham, and it took place on Mount Moriah right outside the ancient Jerusalem here, obeying the commandment of God, Abraham prepared to offer up his only son, Isaac. Wow. He was told to go and sacrifice. And its scheduled uh, execution was stayed at the last moment. A substitute was found. God who had prevail changed Abraham and Sarah's names chose the occasion uh, to give him obedient servant a new name for himself Jehovah Jireh this was God's new name he told Abraham because Abraham was obedient the Lord will provide that's his name the Lord will will provide. It would do for you and I when we're praying to say Jehovah Jireh through your son Jesus Christ we are asking you to provide here for all the substance that we need to do what we need to be the servant for you as well as be the servant to other people as well as to maintain the substance that you've given us. So Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. So he did with Abraham. So he will with us if we obey. Now God allowed him to go all the way to the point with his son Isaac, his only son, to raising the knife to slay his son, knowing if God warned him to do that, he would do that. But he knew God would raise him back up again. And so that's his faith. So 20 centuries later, after that, his only son, he's up similar mountain slope for the identical purpose. This time, however, there was no last minute reproof. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. And as you know, Abraham went up there. And as you know, 
he he uh, went uh, uh, what God did for him gave him uh, a reprieve in his life. Let's look at the overview now of the scripture of Genesis chapter 17 through chapter 25. The subject is this, Life of Abraham, part 2. And the, the uh, specifics are a special seal. God put a seal on Abraham when he was obedient. And then also the uh, he had to do circumcision. Circumcision was to uh, cut the foreskin off of a, a uh, the male after he was born to circumcise the foreskin that was on his uh, private part. And then a special name was Abram became Abraham. And Sarai became Sarah. Those were the two great things that we just read a minute ago that God did. And Isaac, the third great thing, was that child. And he was a special son given by God, the firstborn in a spiritual world. Many, many children had been born. There were millions of people on the earth. The earth was covered with people. But this special child was spiritual. This was the thing. The birth of Isaac, the, the uh, binding of Isaac, and the bride of Isaac, all were called by God. Read the story. Uh, saints and sinners. There was Abraham, Sarah, Lot, Abimelech, and Isaac. Abraham's servant, Rebekah. Now let's look in the Old Testament for a second of a sentence summary that we'll see. Thou art the Lord, the God, who did choose Abram and uh, broughtest him forth out of Ur. Remember, he was in the land of Ur of the Chaldees and givest him a name of Abraham. Nehemiah 9, 7. Now let me tell you this. Down there where he was were all pagan. They all worshipped gods of different, different things. Everything was a god to them. They made wooden gods. They carried them with them. They put them on the bounce shelves. They did everything. They do like some of the Americans do today. Everything in their house is a god. They got it somewhere and they paid a lot for it and it means a lot to them. And, and, and I, I had a, a girl tell me one time I was painting her house and she said, you don't want to break anything in this house. Everything in this house. <laughs> and my mouth is God. You break anything in this house, you'll be in trouble. And that's the world today. That's where we are today. Things in the houses have become our gods. In the New Testament verse, for what says the scripture? Abraham. All the way back now. It's the New Testament. All the way back. It says, Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Romans 4 and 3 through 20. Now. As Abraham goes on, let's see what he did uh, for uh, many things. When Abraham was 99 years of age, God again appeared to him. God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which means the father of many. And uh, of, uh, father, excuse me, of a nation. And his wife's name was changed changed from Sarai, which was contentious, to Sarah, which is princess. And the religious ceremony of a circumcision was instituted as a seal and a sign of the promised threefold covenant concerning the soil, the seed, and salvation, already given in Genesis chapter 15. Now, uh, Abraham had to be totally obedient and all of the males from that day forth that were born in that 
And so this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Genesis 17.10 God again gave a promise of the heir concerning Abraham. A, a uh, laugh for joy. At Abram's request, God promised to bless Ishmael. And uh, uh, Ishmael was born from Hagar. I don't let's see if we're going to come across that here. Uh, God again appeared Abraham, this time accompanied by two angels. God has some good news and some bad news. The good news was that Sarah would give birth to the long-promised heir in the following spring. This caused Sarah to laugh in unbelief. The bad news was that Sodom, Lot's home city, was to be destroyed because of the wickedness. Abraham, who began by asking for 50, received God's promise that Sodom would be spared even if he could find 10 righteous people. And, uh, but he couldn't. He couldn't find any. So his kin, who was his kin, was there in Sodom. And uh, Abraham wanted to get him out of there. His kin was Lot. And the two angels informed Lot of Sodom's impending doom. But first had to blind some threatening sexual uh, degenerates that Lot attempted unsuccessfully to persuade his married daughters and their husbands to leave with him. At daybreak, Lot and his family were physically removed from Sodom by the angel. Sodom was totally destroyed by fire. Lot's wife, who looked back, she looked back, and in a, in a cave outside the city, uh, Lot's unmarried daughters fearing that they would never marry, got their father drunk, and had sexual relation with him. Both became pregnant and bore children. And the oldest name was Moab, the father of the Moabites, and the youngest was called ben the father of the Ammonites. Now I got news for you. As we study the Bible, we will see the Moabites. They were wicked people. We will see the Amorites. They were wicked people. They were they were sold in sin, and they were uh, brought forth that way. And they were that way when they died. Note the steps of Lot's downfall. He looked longingly at Sodom. Let's begin. Be careful. If you're a Christian, if you've asked Jesus, forgive you of your sin, come in your heart. You be careful what you look at in the world. You be careful what you desire. If you desire something that will take you away from the Lord, uh, for instance, a lot of people desire a boat. A boat's not a bad thing. But if you desire a boat so you can go fishing every Sunday instead of going to church, then you desire a bad thing. And you don't need the boat. The boat will be, a, a dest uh, be, be bad for you and unless you really bring yourself into check and don't do that. And, and he, he chose the area of the land near Sodom. We see. And he pitched his tent towards Sodom. And he moved the city of Sodom. And he returned to Sodom in spite of a severe warning by God. And he gave both his daughters and his uh, in, injuries to, to Sodom. He, 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 got, he got taken away. He, he saw the hoopla and he liked it. I used to dance. I used to love the hoopla of dancing. After I got saved, never danced again. Why? Because I had no right to be down on a dance floor holding somebody else's wife in my arms and my wife was at home. And I had a wife. I had no, and if you're a Christian, you have no right to be holding another woman in your arms for any reason, for any reason, if you have a wife. You're supposed to cherish your wife. 
supposed to obey what God said. You're supposed to treat your wife proper. What would you say if your wife was dancing with another man? Huh? You'd be upset. All right. A son born to Abraham, now 100, and Sarah, now 90. They named him Isaac, meaning Laughter. <laughs> that is kind of laughter, isn't it? With her 90 and him 100. All right. So a great feast was held. The mark to mark his weaning. Both Hagar and her 14-year-old son, Ishmael, was sent away from Abraham's household for marking Isaac during this happy occasion. See, the sin that Abraham committed in having the child with the maid with Hagar. Uh, man designed, uh, God designed man to have one woman. He designed woman to have one man. A man that was designed to have one wife. A woman was designed to have one man. That's it. That's a lifetime thing. Do you know that I had lost my wife a year or so ago and you know that's a hard thing for me to look at and say but you know what I've got work to do I've got studying to do I've got I've, I've been studying today I'm studying today I just picked this off another book that's open and, and there's another book open and, and I picked this one off another book that's open and I got two books open down here and I got a book open here and I got a Bible open here so I have something to do. <laughs> and trying to put it all together without being confusing. So the angel of the Lord again ministered to the Egyptian girl and became to her a, uh, anchor. And Abraham's fame grew, uh, causing Ab Abimelech to seek a trace with him truce with him excuse me Abimelech Abimelech wanted to have a truce with Abraham alright so we begin to get covenants now let's look at a covenant that God's going to make with Abraham Abraham has become God's earthly man to make things go right on this earth spiritually so Abraham covenant the first given to Abraham, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, uh, ratifies 10 years later in chapter 15, 1 and 8. It was uh, reconfirmed nearly 13 years later, 17 and 14. In addition, Abram's name was changed from Abram, which meant exalted father, to Abraham, father of a multitude. Though he still had no children at this time, Abraham was 99, Sarah was 89, her name was likewise changed from Sarai to Sarah. Now that's the third time we've read that in the few little words that I've done already here. And our time is passing. God promised to give Abraham many children and that Sarah herself would bear him a son and the new, that news caused Abram joyful wonder for it would mean that at 90 years old a woman would give birth to a son whose father was a hundred and the thought caused him to wish that Ishmael man from God could be given a place of recognition in God's sight. But God promised Ishmael uh, uh, pre preeminence, but guaranteed that the covenant given to Abram would be passed on to the son being born of his succeeding generation in the propriety. This father confirms the unconditional nature of the Abrahamic covenant None of it benefit uh, beneficiaries is in any way responsible to assist in its realization or it depends solely on God. As a token sign, the covenant 
Abraham was given the right of circumcision. Every male child born to Abraham and his descendants was to be circumcised in the eighth day in obedience to Abraham. Circumcision, every male in the house, including Ishmael, age 13, and himself, age 99, even today, Jews circumcise their sons at eight days of age, and Arab Arabs circumcise their sons at 13. Because you remember, Haggai's boy was 13. And we remember now that those folks were, uh, the Arabs were started with the, her son, Haggai's son. That was the beginning of the Arabs. And it's, uh, well, isn't it odd that the, the Arab nation and the Israelite nation came from the same man's loins and the same woman? I uh, know, in a different woman, excuse me. Circumcision was a testimony of the father's faith in God's promise to Abraham. The father is circumcising his son was saying, in effect, I believe the promise of God that gave Father Abraham, that he will uh, fulfill them, if not in my day, then in the day of my son. Wow. Hey, Jewish boys bore on their bodies visible testimony of their father's belief or unbelief in God's covenant with Abraham. A short time later, God in the person of an angel of the Lord and accompanied by two angels came to Abraham and Sarah. They accepted Abraham's hospitality and confirmed that Sarah indeed would have a son knowing that her menstrual cycle had ceased. Understanding Sarah laughed when she overheard the news and the angel of the Lord heard her laugh and confirmed that indeed she would have a son and specified that it would be within a year and this was realized just as the angel of the Lord promised. With the birth of Isaac, human beings have been brought into the human race in four ways thus far in the book of Genesis by direct creation which was Adam uh, from the rib taken out of man that was Eve from the union of male and female uh, most of the population from parents who have passed fertility Isaac he, he came after she had passed fertility. And there is one other way remaining for a virgin by a Holy Spirit, Jesus. God is able to do the impossible whenever he chooses to do so. With the Virgin Mary. After uh, uh, confirming the birth of Isaac, the angel of the Lord revealed to Abraham his intent a destruction of Sodom and Abraham knowing that Lot had uh, become a resident of that city interceded with God and uh, got the promise from God that there were they were able to if there were ten righteous persons and the death of Sodom uh, degradation is shown by the angel visiting Lot's house in Sodom Sexually degenerate men surrounded the house, desiring a homosexual relationship with Lot's visitors. Lot offered them his virgin daughters in spite of the degradation and the filth which he lived in. Lot was still righteous in God's sight. God delivered him from Sodom's destruction. Lot was out of Sodom, but Sodom was not completely out of Lot, as was evidenced by the fact that his daughters got him drunk and conceived children by him. We talked about that a couple minutes ago. 
Now let me tell you something. When I got saved, truly saved, God delivered me from the world. But when He delivered me from the world, I have to stay free from the world. Yet, if I do something that is worldly that I shouldn't do, it is a sin. And what do you do when you sin? You say, God, forgive me of that sin and uh, deliver me from it. And I accept forgiveness from God for that sin. And He delivers me from it. And and now I, now I don't have it in front of me. That's what Calvary is about. God sending His Son. God tested Abraham by uh, ordering him to offer up Isaac as a burnt offering on Mount Moriah. And as it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am, Lord. Chapter 22 and 1. Upon arriving three days later, Isaac, not knowing he was to be the sacrifice, asked, Behold, Dad, here's the fire and here's the wood, but where is the burnt offering? Verse 7. With a breaking heart, Abraham answered, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. Verse 8. Abraham built an altar, bound his beloved son to it. At the last moment, God stopped him, showing him a nearby substitute ram. Abraham named this place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Our day in the morning should be, Lord Jesus, I need Jehovah Jireh today. I need the Lord to provide today. I am I was sold in sin. I am a sinner saved by grace. And I will probably, before I die, sin some more. And need grace over my life because of that. And the angel of the Lord again assured him of the... Uh, fetters of the Abrahamic covenant and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself have I sworn saith the Lord for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son thine only son then in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashores. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And they, thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Chapters 15 through 18. Let me, let me tell you something right here. We are blessed right now because of Abraham and what he did but we see a picture here of him offering his son and God said you're human and you can't really do this I am God I'm going to offer my son and my son will have to be offered all the way through because his death his burial and his resurrection will prove that he is me in the flesh. That he is the same as I in the flesh. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The three are one. I was studying this very day, this morning, early, that we are a body, a soul, and a spirit. In Genesis chapter 3, talks about us being a body, soul, and and spirit. And when he took the rib from Adam and made Eve, she became a body, a soul, and a spirit. She became as Adam was, except she was a female. She had the female attributes instead of the male attributes, but she was a body, soul, and spirit.
And that's what we are, male or female. We're bodies, souls, and spirits. Now, our soul and our spirit was designed to go and be with God and live with God forever. Forever. And that was it. So, uh, Sarah died at the age of 127 and uh, bought the cave of, uh, I can't not pronounce the word, Mekhefa, for 400 pieces of silver and buried her and his command. And Abraham ordered his servant Eliezer to go to Haran, find a wife for Isaac. On arriving at Haran, Eliezer asked God, for a sign concerning the right choice for Isaac. Rebecca's action and kindness fulfilled this prayer. What a story. I believe we're going to read it. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray then, send me a good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the will of well of water, and the daughters of the man of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy picture, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, behold, Rebekah came out, and uh, born, in, uh, excuse me, who was born in Bethel son of Malchah, the wife of Nahor, and Abram's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. She agreed to go with him to marry Isaac. She waited. First she asked him, could she give him water, and she would water the camels. And she agreed to go with him and to be the husband. This one of the scriptures, the greatest typical chapter, typical chapter, Abraham is a type of the father. Isaac is a type of the son. Eliezer is a type of the Holy Spirit. Rebekah is a type of the church. Wow. Uh, let me tell you something. God gave me the wife I had. My wife was a total gift from God. No other woman would have ever put up with me when I was younger. My wife put up, excuse me, my wife put up with a hellion. Uh, it was like, I was like a man that came out of hell, came up from hell, just to act like the devil. And she stayed with me. And for two, three, four years there, I was a devil himself. And God, and God finally saw fit, November 5th, 1972. I got married in 63. So she stayed with me 63. 73 is 10 years. Uh, so uh, nine years uh, after I was saved, before I got saved. And I got saved, and uh, the Lord said, uh, 70, wait a minute, it was more years than that. But anyway, the Lord said to me at 2 o'clock in the morning, November 5th, 1972, your number's up. You can ask me right now, or you're gonna you're gonna die, or you're gonna die in hell, go to hell. I'm not gonna bother with you anymore. I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart, save my soul. Never took another drink. Never swore another cuss word from that day to this. There was another thing that I did that God had delivered me from at the same moment, but I kept doing it. About three o'clock in the morning. The next November, uh, about a year or so later, a year later, God said, I went out back to light up a cigarette. 
And God said to me, just like he said to me, you need to be saved. He said, I delivered you from those cigarettes. Same time I delivered you from the alcohol and the cussing. I said, thank you, Lord. Threw that cigarette down and never smoked another one from that day to this. I accepted the deliverance. It's very important. Now listen to me. If you've asked Jesus, forgive you of your sin, come in your heart and save your soul, you've been delivered from all of the things that you do that are against God. You've been delivered. You must accept it. You must say, God, I'm going to accept it, and that's it, and I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to do it anymore. If you fail and do do it, use that same prayer. Say, Lord, I said that before, and I meant it. But I have fallen, but I meant it. And I, I'm going to start all over again. And, and you work it out until you exceed. And God will, will do it for you. So Abraham married a woman named uh, uh, Kethra, who bore him six sons, and the most important was the fourth, whose name was Midian, the father of the Midianites. His city, Abraham died at 175 and was buried alongside Sarah in Makalot's cave. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to uh, go out of a place which he should have to receive the inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, knowing whether, not whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, and heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which the foundation whose builder and maker was God. Hebrews 11, 8 through 10. So, We've entered into Abraham's life here, a uh, little bitty section of it. And uh, our uh, full time is not up. And I have Genesis 22 records the supreme test, supreme test of Abraham's faith and the supreme victory accomplished by faith. Now when I'm doing a study, which I've been in a study of Abraham, I went through all of this. If I go right now back through this, it will be covering very much of what I just covered. And it, in other words, it's a, a, a reenactment of, of what I just covered. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to actually close this out at 43 minutes right here. And uh, 44 minutes, let's put it that way.